The women peace campers at Grenham Common, England, claim that they were attacked by U.S. electromagnetic weapons from within the U.S. air base. Scientists from Electronics Today measured some form of electromagnetic wave that was responsible for the illnesses they suffered. A team of doctors from the Medical Campaign Against Nuclear Weapons compiled a report on the condition of the affected women. The women first noticed a pattern of illness emerging in 1984. Women at different points around the camp appeared to experience similar symptoms at the same time, even though they were not in contact with one another. Large numbers of women complained of sudden feelings of extreme tiredness shortly before major events, such as the departure of a cruise missile convoy. Readings taken with a wide-range signal strength meter showed marked increases in the background signal level near one of the women's camps at the time they claimed to be experiencing ill effects, including vertigo, retinal bleeding, burnt face even at night, nausea, sleep disturbances, palpitations, loss of concentration, loss of memory, disorientation, severe headaches, temporary paralysis, faulty speech coordination, irritability, and a sense of panic in non-panic situations, and in one case a circulatory failure that required emergency treatment. Many of these symptoms have been associated in medical literature with exposure to microwaves, and especially through low-intensity or non-thermal exposure. These effects have been reviewed by Dr. Robert Becker, twice nominated for the Nobel Prize and a specialist in electromagnetic effects. His report confirms that the symptoms mirror those he would expect to see had microwave weapons been deployed. British defense officials have denied any form of electronic signal was being used against the protesters. The Department of Justice Electromagnetic Weapons Program The Department of Defense uses the Department of Justice to develop and test non-lethal weapons as an aspect of deniability because many of these applications violate existing treaties. By using the Department of Justice and classifying these programs as crowd control, they are able to avoid scrutiny and can violate the spirit of the law without technically being in violation of international treaties. In 1993, the National Institute of Justice Initiative on Less Than Lethal Weapons recommended that state and local police departments in America utilize psychotronic, electromagnetic, and other mind control weapons against American citizens involved in, quote, domestic disturbances an open-ended term that could include family arguments. The report said, quote, short-term research will be completed to adopt a military technology to use by domestic law enforcement, including laser microwave and electromagnetic weapons, unquote. The Washington Post reported, quote, the Pentagon and the DOJ have agreed to share state-of-the-art military technology with civilian law enforcement agencies including exotic non-lethal weapons." Unquote. This new approach to law enforcement was showcased in a three-day secret conference on non-lethal weaponry at the Applied Physics Laboratory at John Hopkins University in Maryland. The conference head was Colonel John B. Alexander, Program Manager for Non-Lethal Psychotronic Defense, Los Alamos National Laboratory. Attending the meeting was Attorney General Janet Reno, military weapons specialists, and representatives from state and local police departments. Subjects included radio frequency weapons, high-powered microwave technology, acoustic technology, voice synthesis, and application of extreme frequency electromagnetic fields to non-lethal weapons. question about some of the technology that you're developing to fight the war on terror, specifically directed energy and high-powered microwave technology. Do you, uh, when do you envision that you can weaponize that type of technology? Mm -hmm. Goodness. Um, it, is, it is in, for the most part, the kinds of things you're talking about are in varying early stages. Do you want to do you have anything you'd add? I don't think I would add much. I, mm -hmm. I, 
I think they are in early stages and, and, and probably not ready uh, for employment at this point. The, the, in, in the normal order of things, when you invest in research and development and begin a developmental project, uh, you don't have any intention or expectations that one would use it. Uh, on the other hand, the real world intervenes from time to time, and you reach in there and take something out that is still in a developmental stage, and you might use it. So it, the an I, it's not, your question is not answerable. It, is, it, is, uh, it depends on what happens in the future and how, how well things move along the track and whether or not someone feels it's appropriate to reach into a development stage and see if something might be useful, as was the case with the unmanned aerial vehicles. But you sound like you're willing to experiment with it. I, I think that's the point. And I think, and it's, we, we have, I think, from the beginning of this conflict, I think General Franks has been very open to looking at uh, new things if there are new things available and has been been willing to, to put them into the fight even before they've been fully <laughs> wrung out. And I think that's uh, not referring to these two particular cases of directed energy or, or high-powered uh, microwave, uh, but, but sure. Just the head uh, was burned and uh, uh, other, the other parts of the, the bodies wasn't anything that happened on, on it. Al-Ghazali reported that he had seen three passengers in a car, all dead, with their faces and teeth burnt, the body intact and no sign of projectiles. Uh, there wasn't any, any bullet. I saw the, the teeth, just the teeth, and um, no eyes. Uh, all of them, with the body, nothing for the bodies. Just the teeth and, and uh, all the, uh, I mean, uh, the heads uh, were uh, burned. There were other inexplicable aspects the terrain where the battle took place was dug up by the American military and replaced with other fresh earth. The bodies that were not hit by projectiles had shrunk to just slightly more than one meter in height. Uh, except that uh, the bodies is uh, scaled by the bu bullets. Most of them that uh, become very small. Uh, I mean, uh, it's like, like that, something like that. talk with the colleague Dr. Saad El Faluji, which is the chief surgeon in that hospital. Dr. El Faluji said to me that from the survivors that he operated, that they said they did not hear any noise. So there was no explosion to hear, no metal fragments or shrapnels or bullets in the bodies. So they themselves were thinking of some strange kinds of weapon which they did not know. No gunshot wounds. No, no. I think I don't know what it was really. We couldn't. We are here ten uh, surgeons. We couldn't decide what was the weapon which been uh, hit this car. But inside the bodies, you did not discover ordinary bullets. All of them being. All, no, we didn't find bullets. Yeah. We didn't find bullets. But most of the uh, passenger people been dead. So they took them immediately to the uh, refrigerator. We couldn't dissect and see. But those, those who are alive, we couldn't find any kind of uh, shells. We didn't find shells inside their body. Outside, it seems to be a new, a new weapon. It seems, it seems a new weapon. They tried to accept what it was. So, new experiments on our, on our civilian. We don't know what was. Uh, Nobody can identify what the type of this weapon. 26 in the past, about 20 of them, some of them have no head. They had been cut. Some of them, the arms, the legs. The only one who didn't injure was the driver. And really, I don't know how he reached our hospital. Because one hand, one arm was in his lap. One head beside him. It was a very, very strange, horrible, horrible, horrible thing. In the roof of the car, there was part brain, of the body, quantum intestine, brains. Yes, so all parts of the body. It was a miserable, it was very, 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 very miserable. I told them before. Do you have idea with what kind of weapons they attacked that bus? This the bus, we didn't know what kind of uh, weapon would be uh, hit. Really, what we saw, 
cut arms, cut legs, cut head, abdomen, open abdomen.